I failed the FE exam my first time. It's actually kind of a crazy story. Uh, maybe I'll get into it, but we're going to talk about why I failed my first time and then the steps I took to overcome that failure, get back on the horse and pass it the second time. And actually the second time I thought I passed it easily. I thought it was a breeze. So, well, why did I have such vastly different experiences the first and second time? Get your seats because here we go. So first and foremost, I want to say that this channel, this team that everyone is a part of, I want to be totally transparent. On this channel, I try to provide example problems and real world uh, knowledge to all of you to hopefully advance your career more quickly and to avoid some of the mistakes that I made early in my career. But sometimes it can come across as that maybe everything is just streamlined and I'm just on top of you know, all of the crap that I do and it's just another day in the life for me and I know how to do everything. That is 100% not the case. I struggle every day just like all of you do. I myself fail at plenty of things. This video being an example of that. So to save everyone a little bit of time, why did I fail the FE exam the first time? Simply put, I wasn't studying the right material. The FE exam is different than the PE exam. The PE exam, you can take any material you want into the exam under certain guidelines, anything you want, and use that to take the test. The FE exam is a PDF document that is provided to every single engineer that takes that exam. It's the same information, and you have to use that provided information to pass the exam. So what did I do wrong? Seems pretty straightforward. Well, I'm all about problems. I'm all about doing practice problems, doing study problems. We know this through the channel, right? I mean, come on, come on. You've been in this in the auditorium for, what, how long now? Come on. We all know, we all know. Jose doesn't know, but we know. But I was actually studying and doing the practice problems without the actual PDF that is gonna be provided to you on the exam. I was going through trying to solve these problems just, just at the top of my head, saying, okay, I'm supposed to know this knowledge uh, you know, I went through my undergrad and it, the exam is accumulation of all the knowledge that you've learned through your undergrad in college. So I should know this, right? I, I should be able to recall information and answer these questions. They're not that difficult. Well, that's where it just went totally wrong. What happened was when I got problems uh, wrong during my practice exams, I would just look at the solutions, look through how it was completed and Basically, this is going to sound silly, but I tried to memorize it. I tried to say, oh, I'm supposed to know that. Or I looked at the solution and I said to myself, wow, that's actually a really easy solution. It's really straightforward. I can remember that. I should be remembering that. You know, we, there's harder things that I've had to remember before. So I should be remembering this. That's, that's what I should be doing. Totally incorrect. I highly suggest you do not do that. The thing that is very similar about the PE and the FE exam or that it's not about memorization. It is about your ability as a junior engineer or an aspiring engineer still in school, being able to look through provided information, find solutions quickly and effectively, and apply that to the problems that you are tackling. That's really it. That's, that's what engineering is. It's problem solving. You can't memorize the solution to every single one. And most of the time, each problem that you encounter as an engineer is, to is totally unique. It's totally unique and all its own. And if you are spending day and night trying to memorize that solution as they come and trying to keep that all boggled up in your brain, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're, you're never going to make it. You're going to stress out. Uh, you're going to burn out. You're not going to enjoy the career path. That's just, that's not sustainable. You want to be able to have the confidence and the knowledge to go and find information and know where to look for information. That is the key to passing both the FE and the PE exam. So in the FE exam, like I said, that book of information is provided to you. So you don't have to guess at what you need to bring to the exam. You know every problem that's gonna be on the exam, the solution is contained somewhere in that provided document. So the best way that I overcame my first failure to then pass my second attempt was to take that concept and really just drive it home. I practiced problems once again. 
some of the same ones. Other ones, I got my hands on more problems. I still do believe that the more problems you practice, the better off you'll be. But here's the kicker. When I was starting the problem, I would say, okay, this is what they're asking. Then I would go to the document that they provide you and I would flip through until I found the equation or the information that was needed to answer that problem. Even if I already knew the path forward on that problem, I wanted to be so sound with that book, that book was gonna become my life. Everything inside of that book, I wanted to know where it was. I didn't wanna memorize every equation, every line, every text in there, but I wanted to memorize how it was organized, how it was laid out, and where each bit of information was located for my use. That was the key to my success the second time. And really, when, once that clicked for me, the exam was a breeze. And now it's story time, Jose. So on my first attempt, uh, it was actually a really rainy day. It was like downpouring outside. I had to drive like an hour to the test facility and I packed everything I needed, uh, you know, your little lunch and stuff like that and, and your approved calculator. And that's pretty much it, right? Got there like 45 minutes early because, you know, you're freaking out as it is. So you want to make sure you're punctual. You're like, oh my gosh, what if I get a flat tire? Or what if this old lady's crossing the street and it takes her 45 minutes to get across the street? There's crazy things that go on in your head. Well, I got there early and I felt ready to go. And I felt I felt comfortable. And I opened my, my little string bag, which has my, my sandwich in it. And I look inside and there's no calculator. I left my calculator at my house and I am panicking. Now, some of you might be saying, well, they, it provides you a calculator option, you know, if you don't bring one. Yeah, don't trust that. That's a, a little digital calculator that you have to click with a mouse to like punch stuff in. That's not gonna get you anywhere when you're crunched for time. So don't trust that one, bring your own calculator. Actually, believe it or not, it's this beauty right here. I still use this to this day. I used to have a fancy TI-89 graphing calculator. It's like like multiple hundred dollars. You know, everyone in school had them to pass like Calc 3. Uh, that's been in my drawer for like ever. Uh, it's all about this now. This is the TI-36X Pro. At the time, this was the highest professional calculator that was allowed for the NCES guidelines. So, of course, you got to get the, the Cadillac of the shittiest calculators. Uh, but to this day, this is all that I use because this is all that you need for mostly every bit of engineering besides maybe some like high-rise analysis. So keep it basic, keep the fundamentals strong. But anyway, I didn't have this. Yeah, zero, didn't have it at all. So what I did, and this was in the morning session. So this was like an 8 a.m. start and it was like, what, 7.15 at the time. And the front desk lady was seeing the panic in my eyes. Like I was gonna break down for this. Uh, and I looked up, with my phone, uh, a Staples, which for anyone not in the US, it's basically like a, um, a home office store that sells calculators and paper and printers and stuff like that, was uh, 20 minutes down the road. I ran to my car, I jumped in, I flew down the highway, and again, it's like monsooning now, so it's pouring rain. I can, my windshield wipers are going as fast as they could possibly go, and I'm jetting down jetting down the highway to get to the Staples and back just in time to take my exam. I pull up to the Staples without a hitch. I got there at record time. It's not open yet, but the lights are on. There's people inside and I am banging on this glass, like banging on the front door, pleading for them to open up and let me in to buy this so I can get out of here. And they're like, they're mortified. They're, they're horrified at this site of this guy in the pouring rain. Like I didn't even have a jacket. Like I'm just like smashing on this. Like you have to let me in. It's early morning. They're not even open yet. Who's going to get office supplies at eight in the morning? Like nobody, but I was. The guy slid the door just like open like half a crack. And he like just like whispered to me like, we're not open. And I explained my situation. I explained that I needed this to happen. Like I, he basically, was the deciding factor between me taking my exam and furthering my engineering pursuit and calling it quits right there for that day and having to start all over and re-sign up. He thankfully gave me the calculator. I jetted back. I got there with about three minutes left. I ran in the front door and the secretary lady 
she she was like expecting me. She's like, you made it, you made it. Like, oh my gosh, like come inside, your seat's right there. Like take a couple minutes to, to like take a breath. Like the, cause you have to read, you get like 10 minutes uh, to read the, the intro stuff and how the exam works and how it's laid out and what you're supposed to be clicking to answer and check and stuff. You know, you have like a 10 minute window at the beginning to understand the formatting. So she was like, take some of that time to just like breathe and relax and focus and zone back in because you're ready. And I, to I totally wasn't ready. I was just demoralized. It was the biggest exam at that point in my life that I've ever taken. And now I'm like wet and I'm on this seat and I'm looking through and I just see this timer going. And of course you're just, you're just sweating more. It just, it's so much more nerve wracking. And there's these rules as to what you can click and like what a check mark means. And if you want to skip something and flag it and come back, you all know what I'm talking about if you've taken it already. It just, it wasn't straightforward when you were a stressed out college kid trying to take this exam. And I blew it, but I didn't let it get me down. Uh, I saw, you know, I, I saw that email, that little email that pops up at like three months later and your whole stomach just, just drops like through the floor like out of existence and I clicked on it and you, you unfortunately you don't see that that lovely green color that all of us want to see for our exam results I saw a red color and uh, from there honestly I closed that email I opened up the website the NCES website and I re-signed up that day because um, I wasn't gonna allow myself more time to slip by and you know, woe is me and, and be upset about it and just, just pivot. I needed to reanalyze the situation and understand and talk with my friends who did pass it to see what they had been doing. Because um, again, you need to understand you're not in this alone. If you have good friends, if you have good classmates, good study mates, they're, they're there to help you. You know, they're not there to make fun of you. Sometimes they're to make fun of you, but they're not there to make fun of you when it comes to your school and your career. So they're there to help and I got a couple of opinions and I, like I said, I, I looked at it myself and said, wait, this is not the correct way to do this. And I went back in with much more confidence, knocked out of the park. So there we are team. Jose, stop sleeping. You, you, you wanted this topic, but that's it today. Uh, I hope this inspired some people. I hope this allowed some people to take a breath because even though this is talking about the FE exam, this applies just as much to the PE exam. This applies to the SE exam, which I'm studying for now, um, or anybody else out there that is taking and preparing for a major exam. It's just failure. You can't be afraid of failure. Otherwise, you, you'll just be so immobilized to take any action and to prepare. You need to understand and come to terms that it may be a possibility, but it's not the end of the world. Good luck out there. Everyone's studying and progressing their knowledge in the engineering field. This is Rich with Kestapa. See everybody later. Bye.